Switching to Linux, how about syncing all of that sweet performance boosting RGB? Hi everyone, my name is Robert and I make videos on Beep Beep stuff. In this video, we're going over Linux and Razer RGB goodness. Before we get into this tutorial, welcome. If Linux and Razer RGB isn't your thing, then YouTube, what the fuck? Um, I don't know why you're wasting these people's time, these good people's time on Razer and RGB goodness. Hold on, yep, I just got it, don't worry. If servers, Linux and home labs and reviews is your thing, then do me a little favor and uh, do a little love tap on the subscribe button. That would be pretty awesome. Right, to Linux. Now, the process for installing this is actually really simple. I'm going to take you through it. Any of the commands in the tutorial will be in the description below. There's only a couple, so you don't need to worry about that. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the OpenRazor packages. So if I go to OpenRazor here, this is openrazor.github.io. Now, if you go to download, uh, you're going to get all of the official supported and community repositories here. Uh, obviously, for this installation on Manjaro, uh, it's going to be the Arch Linux Manjaro um, uh, installer. No one needs to get funky about that. And you're going to want to install open razor dash meta. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Since I kind of aiming the Linux tutorials at new people, uh, you're going to click on the application launcher and you're going to click add remove software. Once you go on add remove software, you're going to press the search button and you're going to type in open razor dash meta. When you enter, you're going to get this package here and then you're going to want to build it uh, and that will basically install it. Uh, now, once you've installed this, uh, you're going to need to restart your computer. Now, obviously, I don't need to do that since it's already installed on this computer, but you'll build it, it'll install, it'll take a little while sometimes, but it will finish. Once it's done, you're going to need to do something before you restart the computer. You're going to need to open up a terminal window. Now, what you need to do is you need to enable the computer to run a daemon that will allow the service to run properly to gain access to the hardware. Um, so what you need to do is you type in sudo space g pass wd and you can see the command has come up on my computer already. Uh, so sudo space g pass wd space dash a dash dollar sign capital user plug dev. Now uh, once you've entered this command, um, some tutorials will say do not restart and some say do to be honest, uh, in my experience, you need to do the restart for this to work, so I would do that. So go ahead and click on restart on your computer and then come back. Now, whilst your computer is restarting, obviously mine isn't because I'm recording this video after the fact, but whilst your computer is restarting and you're still watching this video somehow, what you need to do is you need to go onto the website linked in the description below and that will show you a list of all the products that are supported via this program. Not everything is supported, uh, that's to be expected. You can see what's supported there. If your product or the thing that you have is not listed there, you can submit. There is a submit form there to send your product to them so they can actually see uh, which products are still not supported and which are still in use. What they do with this information, I have no idea. Maybe they compile a list of it somewhere. Maybe they laugh at people who have those things. I have no idea. But there is a form that exists, so yay. You can go on there and see what kind of level of support is there. I have some products. I have the Mini Huntsman, works awesome. I have the uh, Goliath uh, mouse pad, works awesome. Everything synced together really good. I have Nari Ultimate uh, headset. That, on the other hand, does not. Uh, it's not supported via this method. Um, but hopefully it will be at some point, although I don't really care about the RGB on the headset. I would like to be able to control the other features of that headset via Linux and not use a Windows VM. Uh, for the most part, the mouses and uh, the keyboards and the pads and so on, they all work really good as well as a few extra accessories. So definitely click on the link in the description below. That will take you to the website and then you can see which things are supported and which things are not. If the RGB is important to you, which it should be because it's performance boosting. Yeah. Now that you've restarted, nothing really will happen with the uh, devices you have plugged in. You'll get no notifications or nothing like that. For the next part of this tutorial, what I want you to do is I want you to open up your browser and I want you to go to polychromatic.app. Uh, and in this one, you can find uh, the downloads for each of this, um, uh, for each version of Linux here. You can go into Arch Linux. Now you can install this uh, terminal command here if you want to. Uh, if you want to use the uh, installer for software, 
through the uh, GUI, you can also type it in here, polygrammatic, and click on that, and then click here, build, and it will install that program. Now, once you've installed this, it might ask you to restart, it may not. Again, in my experience, to link these two things together, open race and polychromatic, I had to restart to allow the daemon to actually connect properly. Um, and after that, it just works every single time. So my suggestion is to do a restart. So if I now go to the uh, icon at the bottom, polychromatic, I can uh, right click this and I can see my two devices here, my Goliath mouse pad, as well as my Razer uh, Huntsman Mini. Uh, as you can see, if I hover over them, I get various options for each one about the color, effects, um, macro recording, everything else. You can also open the controller here. I'm going to drag it over to the right window. Uh, and you get the uh, various devices here. This one is unknown. This is my Nari Ultimate headset, uh, which is not supported by Open Razor yet. I hope it will do at some point. Uh, you can click on these and you can get device information, for example, change all the effects for kind of things happen after another thing, spectrum, static, breathe. They're, they're all the usual stuff that you would expect of uh, the Windows application is pretty much here. There's not much here that is missing, to be honest. Uh, the support for OpenRaiser is quite large, but there are a few devices that are still missing, uh, like I said about the, the headset I have here. Um, if you click apply to all, it will apply to all the devices that are plugged in. So that works really good. You can change the brightness, you can change the color, you can change the macro recording and key mapping through this application. Uh, and it's a really nice way to manage if you're used to this type of software, uh, GUI, uh, like from Windows and you want to use Linux and you want to be able to control the sweet RGB that you have. Uh, to improve your gaming, and then uh, this is going to be the way to do it. There is a couple of other programs, uh, front-end programs. Uh, Polychromatic is not the only one. For me, Polychromatic and Open Racer has been absolutely rock solid. I have had no problems with this at all. It's been very stable. Uh, I have the Spectrum um, layout uh, on my keyboard and on my mouse pad. Um, it looks really good. Perhaps I can throw in some B-roll footage on top of this it's really great uh, that the the way that the lighting works is really smooth exactly how i would expect it to work if it was on windows with the support from razor that they have on there um like i have said there are some things that are missing but huge uh, props to the developers of polychromatic and open razor you guys did an amazing job i only wish that razor and other companies would pull the finger out their asses more and support hardware uh, and this kind of um, driver support on Linux because it will just make everyone's lives a lot better. Everything works really awesome and I think you'll be pretty pleased with the result. Hopefully that tutorial was helpful for you and it got you one step closer to Linuxdom. Uh, if you have any problems, do leave a comment down uh, below and I will use the bits in my head to try and figure out what it is. Um, if you have this setup or you have a setup similar to it, I would actually like to see these results. That would be really awesome. Um, I'm going to leave a link to Twitter down below, so click on that and uh, post me your results for this uh, type of tutorial for your kind of setups for RGB. We all know RGB makes everything faster, so fast setups is what I want to see. If you liked the video, then you know the drill. Like and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content from me, and I will see you in the next video.